What's up YouTube family? Chris here, Riding Dad. Thank you for clicking on the video today. I'm gonna to be putting on a new brake pedal, like the whole arm and everything. Uh, and also a new shifter, not just the little shifter knob, but the whole arm for the shifter. So, they are by Flow Motorsports. Uh, and these are very unique because these are some of the only ones that I found that offer a, a three-way adjustable. They're adjustable in the nature um, from the actual bike. So this is the brake pedal. Uh, and then they are also adjustable. You can adjust the position of the actual uh, brake pedal. And then you can adjust the tilt of it, the angle. Um, you can see they got three different slots uh, and then you can also rotate it. And they match my existing foot pegs. Um, and then this is the shifter and same thing three-way adjustable on this side and also you can adjust the angle once we get over there so what you are going to need for today uh a uh keep in mind this is on uh this is on a harley so if you're doing this on an m8 soft tail uh, i think pretty much all uh, this is mid controls but i think it's going to be very similar for all of them um, but uh, i have a anti-seize um, lubrication, a blue thread locker, and then for me, I'm going to have a Torx 25, a 1 4th, and a, I believe this is a 7 30 seconds? Nope, 3 16 A 1 4th and a 3 16 uh, hex, an Allen key, and then something long uh, and kind of skinny um, to get in, especially on the brake side, uh, but uh, also for the adjustable pegs on the Flow Motorsport. Um, shifter and brake pedal. So, uh, things that you're not going to necessarily need, but that are going to help. Uh, a pair of gloves for the anti-seize and the blue Loctite and everything. Um, possibly a towel to clean up any kind of mess or like a little um, ear cleaner kind of thing, like the Q-tip swab. Uh, and a positive attitude. So without further ado, let's hot on over to the bike. I will zoom you guys in and let's work on the brake side first. Okay, so first things first, we got to get the old brake pedal off. The whole arm. All right, so it's kind of hard to see right now, but this pedal is one piece. This is where the, uh, the rotation comes from, and it comes down here. And then there's this pivot arm that's attached to it that goes right here, and that goes to your actual cylinder, your brake cylinder. So we're going to start by taking that piece off. This is going to be the 3 16 and I feel like I don't have to say this, but uh, it's a lefty loosey righty tighty. <laughs> and this is what you're gonna really need a long skinny piece for, um, because if it's not that skinny, you're gonna wind up scratching that piece. Okay, so set that bolt aside. Now we have to take this off, and this is a Torx 25. And this is going to fall when you take this off, or well, when you slide it out. Okay, set that aside. Now you can remove the whole brake arm. So, then you're going to need to detach this. And this looks like it is a 3 16 also. Yep. All right. Oh, don't want your bolt staying or your uh, your uh, your attachment staying there. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside, and now this is the brake lever. Uh, let's compare them side by side real quick. You can see that it is a little bit shorter in its stock configuration, but keep in mind you can also adjust that 
shifter to make it pretty much the exact same height. Um, and there's a plastic bushing for the Harley and a metal bushing for the Flow Motorsports. Very good finish. Um, I don't know if I've said this before, but Flow Motorsports is one of the top, uh, especially for this style of stuff, one of the top brands. I mean, I don't know if you can get any better quality than Flow Motorsports. You can just look at the finish uh, is amazing and the fit is always very good with these guys. So, all right, now I'm gonna put on a glove because we are gonna put some anti-seize on that boy. Gonna wipe it off a little bit first. And for those of you who have never used anti-seize, I had never used it for anything uh, prior to any of the Harley stuff. Just says it's a thread lubricant. I know it's for threads uh, and not specifically for this kind of thing. Um, I'm sure someone is gonna comment or say that I should have used a uh, any kind of other lubricant or like a synthetic or a grease or something like that but this is metal and metal on metal contact uh, and anti-seize I don't believe is gonna hurt it in any way so if you know better do better uh, if somebody's in the comments disagrees with me and they think uh, they know better and you want to follow them go ahead and do that whatever makes you happy in the end of the day this is what's gonna make me happy and we're just gonna go oh, oh okay Gonna just apply a little bit here. Not too, too much. Okay, that should be good. Set that aside. And I'm gonna take my glove off now. All right. Now we have to attach this part, the arm, back onto this guy. There is no Loctite on here from the factory, but I'm just gonna put a very, very small dab of blue Loctite. Uh, definitely do not use red with this stuff. Just a, a dollop of daisy, as they say. That's gonna be enough for me. Set that down and go ahead and get this finger tightened on here. Oh, I tried really hard not to mess that up for the camera, but I'm going to try this instead like this. This is really hard to line up in this angle. There we go. Get our X. And let's tighten this bad boy. And like I say in all my videos, I'm not a Harley expert. Consult your owner's manual for torque specifications to torque this stuff down to. I will not be doing it for this video. Um, I'm not, like I said, by no means am I a master mechanic, uh, but uh, this kind of small stuff, I do feel comfortable that I am okay to do it just kind of based on a feel, especially with the Loctite, so, okay. Okay, that seems to be on there good. Make sure this rotates fine. Looks good to me, okay. Now we're gonna have to thread this underneath, push that through. That sit there, and we're gonna pop this guy onto there. We go. Okay, now we are going to put this bolt through the little linkage. And this again did not have any Loctite on it from the factory, but 
I am going to put just a hair, just a touch. Good enough for me. That's actually almost too much for what I wanted. Dab a little of that off. Okay. And this is the 3 16 again. So let's come over here a little bit and go ahead and start tightening that in. idea of what it's gonna look like and that play guys I don't behind there you can't really see but this little kind of u-joint is connected by like a, a pin and I can't remember the, the name for it it almost looks like one of those keychain rings but it's not um, and it's connected that way to that piece so uh, there's really nothing to do about that unfortunately but uh, okay kind of make sure that it works oh, it feels very smooth which is good um, kind of what you'd expect from just a very little change like this okay and this guy did have blue loctite on from the factory so we're going to go ahead and put some more on this and uh <clears throat> make sure your bolts and your screws and everything are clean prior to putting them back in otherwise basically none of this matters okay and this is the torque torques 25 That's pretty much it for that side, guys. Make sure it works. If you want to turn on your bike, make sure you're getting your lights, but you didn't really change anything on that, so I wouldn't even worry about that. Um, now the adjustable part. I'll just, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna want it. I gotta do a test drive on these first, but this is the part where the bolt is gonna be the one-fourth, or not the bolt, the, uh, the Allen key is gonna be the one-fourth size. Um, it's right in there. So you go through this hole, and this is where I need a skinny one. Kind of unscrew that. You can see you can do uh, any of those three holes that's in the middle right now, and then you can adjust the angle. So you can tighten it like that, tighten it like that, like that, like that. I'm probably going to leave it somewhere about like this. Um, so for right now, I'm going to just kind of eyeball it, and I tighten it down a little bit. Um, when I do eventually find out exactly how I want these, I will be lock tightening that bolt. Uh, with blue Loctite also. So let me go ahead and spin the bike around and I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, now it's time to do the left side, just the shifter. Show you the shifter real quick. Same thing like I showed earlier. Three adjust positions as well as the adjustable slant. Um, something that's odd, and I, I, by the way, I did forget um, the stock Harley, at least on this M8 soft tail. Uh, this is going to be half. Uh, there's a half size bolt, bolt and a half on this too, uh, nut and a bolt. So you will need two half uh, wrenches. So I did forget to tell you guys that. Um, something that's kind of odd, I assumed being for an American made motorcycle, um, this was going to be like a, a one fourth or something like that. But the one fourth is just slightly too big. Um, so it's actually metric, it's, uh, which is kind of odd and kind of honestly a little bit frustrating. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, so this is a six millimeter bolt, um, and again, I'm not, I'm not really sure whether they did that. Uh, for the sake of uniformity for tools, if you're keeping like a tool pack or something on a long trip, it does kind of suck that now you have to have essentially one, <laughs> one metric size just in case um, something happens with that. So anyway, let's get uh, let's get started. So you need to take your two half inch wrenches. And something that I do like to do is take like a, a Crayola washable marker or a dry erase marker. And if you want, when you're adjusting this, um, see how there's like the kind of slot in that. 
if you want to put a little line with that uh, washable or dry erase marker um, and it just washes off you just put it on that little metal pin um, which is the shift linkage coming in there um, it helps when you're adjusting it so you know if you're going if you're actually moving it um, so it is a little bit nice but because this is a completely different setup i'm not even going to bother putting it on there for right now um, and just kind of a side note um, if you guys watch my other video i installed this shift peg which from arlen ness which uh I wouldn't say it's problems necessarily. Um, had I kept these stock foot pegs, it probably would have been fine. But because these are so grippy and the angle um, of which they are and the length, it's uh, very uncomfortable. Um, I can either get it comfortable for shifting up or comfortable for shifting down, uh, which kind of sucks. So, and I think it's because this is longer. If you saw that video or if you want to go click it now, um, I'm kind of newish to YouTube and I'm not a tech savvy individual necessarily. So I'll try to link that video somehow with one of those like pop-up cards or whatever. So if you see it, I did it. If not, I'm sorry, I tried. Uh, so this is longer. It's uh, probably about a half inch, maybe even longer than the stock shifter or a lot of other aftermarket shifters. Just to kind of compare it to the flow, you can see it is about a half inch longer than even this one. So, because it's longer, uh, you don't really have as much space to angle your, your toe area when you're trying to get under it or over it. So that also presented an issue with this. So just in general, this setup, um, unfortunately, was very uncomfortable. Uh, fortunately, this is a very cheap part, um, and I'm either going to go ahead and uh, sell it or give it to somebody if this setup that I'm going to do now works. Um, if it doesn't, I might actually try to switch because this matches my handlebar grips, which uh, is the video I posted previously too. So I'll try to link that also if you're uh, if you're interested. So okay, enough of me blabbering. Let's uh, let's do what you came to see. Let's go ahead and wiggle that off. It has individual teeth um, that match up with that. Make sure you don't lose this little spacer, um, at least on the on the forward control or on the mid controls. It has that. Set that piece aside. We're going to make sure that the Flow Motorsports is loosened up. Uh, and this is something I probably would want to put a little bit of Loctite on, uh, but I'm not going to put it on yet because I don't know where I want it. I'm going to have to do some test rides um, either tonight or tomorrow, depending on what my schedule is like and what the weather's like, uh, and see exactly where I want this. Um, and again, same with this, uh, like I talked about on the brake side. So I'm just going to kind of place it uh, on the, you're always going to want to hold the back of this just so you are able to actually push it in. So I'm going to hold that. I'm just going to put this at a, you'll feel where it fits in. Um, I think that angle, no, that's probably going to be too low. Let me try here. It just kind of fits in and there is kind of a notch um, that'll, that'll seat naturally where that bolt comes in there. So that's on there. Um, and as a side note, when you are adjusting this, um, you know, up and down to get your correct toe placement, the Flow Motorsports, which is another reason I'm, I went with these guys, is because it's so adjustable up here. So beyond the fact that this is adjustable, all shift arms are adjustable right where they connect to your actual shift linkage. And then up here, you see this little uh, linkage in between there has two bolts that can be screwed in or out on either of those pieces. So you have your large adjustability and then you have your fine adjustability to incrementally move it up and down. So that is just one thing to note. If you're getting frustrated over here and you're forgetting about it and you still can't get that perfect uh, heel, or not heel, but a toe up and toe down placement and it's just really pissing you off, uh, maybe you forgot about this. So you can always go to this piece and adjust it a little bit. Um, and uh, I would not lock tighten this piece. Uh, I've not, it just got two little bolts or uh, two little nuts that tighten towards the outer pieces, the outer little linkages. Um, and then these obviously tighten there. So, all right, let's go ahead and tighten up the Flow Motorsports with a six millimeter metric hex, which is very, very odd. I'm only gonna tighten it a little bit because like I said, I still gotta ride and see exactly where I want it. So that's it guys. Uh, and then again, you can adjust this, which I will at some point when I'm riding, but uh, looks clean. I do like how the Flow Motorsports is a almost a wrinkle black, but it's just a flat black. Um, I, I think it's powder coated. I don't know if it's anodized or not, but uh, it's a very nice flat black. It complements the outer primary case on this bike um, and it'll it'll complement any black, but uh, it's 
I like that it's a flat black, kind of mixes in with this, but then it makes the pegs and the shifter peg um, kind of pop a little bit because those are those uh, the shinier black finish on this. This is kind of a matte, but uh, not as matte as that. So, and then you obviously have your uh, gloss black uh, mid control uh, arm, the actual attachment. So, all right. So what do you think? Very easy installation, right? Let me know what you think of these, uh, if you think they look as cool as I think they look. So uh, before I forget, uh, I bought these directly from Flow Motorsports. Uh, I will post a link directly to their website for these both uh, below. I'll also put the coupon code I used. Um, I'll have to double check what it is. But uh, with that coupon code, they were actually cheaper directly through their website um, than Get Lowered. Um, I think Dennis Kirk had them. Uh, somebody else had them too. Uh, RevZilla does not carry these if you're uh, into the Zilla points or the Zilla Cash, whatever it's called. Uh, they do have the little pegs themselves, like where your feet actually go. Uh, they do have different colors for those. And just like the foot pegs, the little, um, like the tiny little spiky things uh, are all replaceable in case one gets damaged or uh, you want to take some out uh, for like a custom fit or whatever. They have very little um, hex sides on them and you can just unscrew them and replace them as need be or take them out if you want to. Um, and I can't remember if I just said it or not, but they do have different colors. Uh, raw, like material, like the... Um, they have, I think, a red, a blue, a gold. Um, their gold looks so nice. I kind of, it made me want to do like a black and gold build for this, but uh, I feel like it's, uh, I know all black has done a lot too, but I feel like black and gold is um, is just very, very heavy in like the Lowrider S um, area. So I wanted to do all black for this, and then maybe someday I'll uh, buy a Dyna and do a full custom paint and do like a, a gold and black hardware for that. Anyway, uh, now I have to go test these out. So I got to go get uh, my gear on and head out in our actual nice weather we have. So subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it does mean a lot. These videos take a long time to do. I could have just done this in, you know, 15, 20 minutes in my garage with not all the lights on and not the extra LED thing and, you know, to make sure that you guys had a good view and worry about all the camera and the mic and everything like that. So uh, I do it to interact with you guys and hopefully help out, um, especially these are newer bikes and I know a lot of people, I couldn't see like almost any reviews on these guys so on the Flow Motorsports. So let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. Until next time, guys, ride safe, have fun, dad out.